Hello everyone. In this small video, we are going to talk about async and await. And we're just going to take a very brief overview of what exactly is async and await from the point of making a request. Now we all have written code like this. You can see that our function name is get movies. It takes a completion handler, which can provide you a result in success cases and some sort of an error when there is an error. Inside the body of get movies, we first form the URL. If the URL is bad, then we fire a failure with a bad URL as an error. All the URLs are, or the errors are, displayed over here. If, however, the URL is correct, then we will use our URL session, share data task with URL. We will get the data, the response, which is ignored, and the error. We try to get the data, unwrap it. If the data is unwrapped, then we go ahead and we perform the movie response dot self, meaning we are just decoding it to some sort of a model. And finally, we call the success passing in the movies. If we need to call this from a view model, how would we call it? Well, let's go to the view model. And we're going to go ahead and create another property over here. Get all movies. This is, by the way, the old way of doing things. This async and await is available in iOS 15 and Xcode 13. Now I'm going to fire completion handler. I will get the result. I can perform a switch on the result. We will have cases for success, which will give us all the movies. And this is where we can do something about the movies. Perhaps we can just print out the movies over here. And we do have another case to handle, which is the failure. And for failure, again, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. We're just going to go ahead and print out the failure. So this was the code that you wrote a lot of times when you are making a request, an asynchronous request using URL session shared dot data task. How can we do, how can we perform the same exact thing but with using async and await. So for that, I'm going to create a new function and I will call it fetch movies. For this function to be async, we need to mark it with async. And we're also going to mark it with throws because we want our function to throw error if it is relevant. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a URL. That code is pretty much the same as before. The only difference is that we don't have any completion handler, so we simply throw the error on line number 43. Now we can call URL session dot shared dot data. And when you call data, one of the overloads of data is for or from, and the from takes in a URL, and this particular data function using the from URL is an async function. And this means that we have to await for it. The await is simply saying that once you perform this URL session dot share dot data request, go ahead and suspend it, meaning go ahead and continue with other work, just don't block this particular thread. This is eventually going to return you with some sort of a result, data and response. And we can also use try so that if it blows up, then we can throw an error. Now in this case, we don't really care about the response that much. So I'm just going to pass underscore that we are ignoring it. And now it's back to the normal decoding. So now we can say JSON decoder dot decode movie response dot self passing in the data perfect we have to decode it using try and now we can say movie response 
So the remaining code is actually pretty much the same, but we do have to return from this particular function. So we will return it also. Now comparing this function, which is fetch movies, with our previous function get movies, you can already see that there is a considerable amount of code reduced, and now it is much more leaner implementation as also it is more cleaner implementation. So fetch movies is the one that is using async and await. In order to use await, you have to mark your function with async or else it's not going to work. Now the question is, well, how do we call fetch movies? Let's go to the view model because we already have a function that calls fetch movies. So right over here, you can see that we have a function call await web service dot fetch movies. And once we get the movies, we can populate it somewhere else. So this is the whole idea about async and await. It is definitely going to allow you to reduce a lot of code. And async and await is not only meant for the functions, you can also decorate it on the properties and it will also work on the properties. Now obviously async and await, especially the await part, is going to only work on the functions that handle async and await or those are of async functions. So you can't just call a function just by saying await and then the function name. That function has to be async. So that is the basics of asyncs and await. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have many different courses ranging from core data to Swift UI, Rx Swift, MVVM design pattern for UI kit as well as MVVM design pattern and Swift UI, new course on GraphQL, Combine, Machine Learning, Flutter, and so much more. Check out the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much, and I hope that you enjoyed the video.